Hello and welcome in again to another edition of Musings from the Mountains, your favorite video podcast presented by WSports.com. I am your host slash MC slash managing editor of the site, Keenan Cummings, and I'm joined by my sidekick, which I'll introduce today, Patrick Cotney, staff hey, writer. What's going on? Appreciate it. Yeah, well, I, I felt like, you know, instead of the awkward exchange, I just kind of <laughs> take, take the bulls by the horns. But we got some stuff to talk about. West Virginia added another commitment on the transfer front. This one is a little bit more transparent than some of the others. I'll get to that in a bit, how the numbers could work. But Joseph Bolopatelli, I believe is how you say it. <laughs> he is an addition to the West Virginia defensive line and really a lot of upside here. Um, there's some exciting things about this guy. Played at NC State for two years, only appeared in two games the first year, so that Pesky red shirt rule that everyone tends to come back around to and like is in, is in play here. Was able to get a red shirt even though he saw time on the field. Played in seven games last year, I believe. And uh, over his two years, I think he had 13 tackles, uh, one and a half sacks. So not huge numbers. But speaking with people that covered him at NC State, a lot of upside. Uh, he is pretty much what you want to have on the defensive line. Six foot four, a solid 260. Gigantic wingspan, looks the part. The concern at NC State was the scheme shift, first of all. That kind of knocked him out of a job this past year. But more being able to do it on a consistent level, which which really is pretty typical for young defensive linemen, Patrick. Yeah, I mean, the thing I'll point out, too, is that, you know, from one from years one to two, I mean, he really did improve a lot. You know, saw more playing time, mentioned he, he only appeared in a couple games during his freshman season. Uh, according to Pro Football Focus, went from playing 31 snaps to 164 uh, to, uh, in his last year at NC State. So, graded higher also, according to Pro Football Focus. So, uh, there was improvement there. I mean, he definitely has all the intangibles, you know, needed to have, you know, to, ha to eventually have some success at the college level. Uh, like you said, Keenan, it's just about doing it consistently. It's going to help in numbers, too. As you pointed out, too, uh, in your article and his, in your transfer review is that West Virginia, they're going to be losing five of their 10 scholarship defensive linemen within the next two years. So, I mean, this is definitely going to – there's a lot of depth right there right now. But as far as, you know, the building numbers for the future, this is definitely going to help as well. Yeah, that's a spot you never have enough guys of. I mentioned it on here before. Offensive linemen, defensive linemen, you recruit them every class, you know, three to five, every single class. Because there's a lot of turnover there and a lot of guys, you never know how they're going to project. So, I think Bullock will tell you – you know, he feels role for West Virginia. I think what's going to be interesting here is how he fits in. Uh, right now, he would be a three-for-three three guy. He's already used his red shirt. There's talk of maybe getting a waiver, or I've been told that's to be determined. But if he does, that's three-for-three, three, could play this year. If not, worst-case scenario, you get two years out of a guy that has a year to learn your system. So either way, a lot of positives out of this for West Virginia. I think it was obvious the coaches were excited. A lot of social media buzz yesterday. And back to what I was talking about initially, the, the way the scholarship situation is going to work, it's pretty clear based on their tweets, a lot of 2020 references. He's going to get one of those 2020 scholarships, which there's two, maybe three, if you listen to Neil Brown left. So that's going to be – one of them is going to Bola Tepelli. Another one. Maybe Scott Young, depending on what happens there. We'll see what happens. Arizona safety transfer. Um, the good news is Tyler Sumter's walking on, and I think you can look at ways to get Bryce Brand on, you know, alternative methods, maybe a walk-on or possibly, you know, blue shirt, that type of deal. But right now, that's the way it looks like with scholarship numbers. But West Virginia continues to add. I don't think they're done. I think they're going to continue to try to find an offensive lineman if they can to, to help the tackle position. But – so far, so good. Things are coming together on the transfer front. You saw last year, this went all the way up to the start of fall camp when they added Josh Groudon. So this is pretty much, uh, you know, once the recruiting season ends for a class, transfer season begins. So you're going to see that all the way up to the start of the season. On a positive note for West Virginia, when it comes to enrollment, all 20 of the players that signed with West Virginia in either Jan or, or December or February – are now enrolled at West Virginia, which is a very, very positive sign. That's hitting 100%. All those guys are enrolled can start their can start, you know, acclimating, joining the team. You know that phased approach has already began. Um, Pat, when you look at these guys, now I'm going to cut out the five that enrolled. That doesn't count. The five guys that are already here participated in two spring practices. I'm cutting them out. Uh, you're you're not allowed to pick them. But any, you know, an offensive, defensive player that you think have, has a chance. Now, 
listen, guys, this is kind of just us spitballing here. We haven't seen him in practice yet. We haven't seen him work out, anything like that. But what, what are two guys offensive defense that you think have a chance to make an early impact? Offensively, I feel like one of the safe picks is Tariq Stewart, you know, offensive lineman. Uh, obviously, I think, you know, when they recruited him, it was believed they recruited him with the expectation that he could come in and help right away. Obviously, West Virginia has two uh, of its starting tackle spots open right now with the, you know, with the loss of Colton McKivitz and Kilby Wickline. So I feel like he's one of the safe bets that, could, you know, if you had a bet on any of these guys to make an, to make an immediate impact on offense, he'd be one of the safe bets to fill in one of those two tackle spots on the offensive line. Defensively, one guy I think that I'm that I'm pretty excited about is Linnell Carr. Uh, we've talked it's about we've talked about them recruiting that bandit, you know, that bandit spot, you know, because before that, before the staff, you know, when they first got here, they didn't really have too many guys that could really fill that role that that, that were natural fits for that role other than Vendarius Cowan. Uh, so you've really seen it, seen them make a priority uh, when it comes to recruiting guys who fit this spot uh, at fit in the band, band spot since they uh, since the coaches have been on campus. So I really feel like uh, he's a natural fit for that band spot. I feel like he can make a he can make an immediate impact as well. Yeah, I'd want up you there. I think you could kind of rush and roulette any of those three guys. You know, mm -hmm. put put them in the turtle shell game. Any of those three bandits, I think they're going to ask at least some of them to play. I don't know how much, but they need help with that position. They need depth. You, know, you got Torres Simmons, Linnell Carr, and of course Eddie Watkins. You know, those are your three guys that to keep an eye on. I think you're right. You know, Linnell is probably the most put together right now from yeah. a physical standpoint. He looks like he could play. We saw him at camp last year. He didn't participate, but we saw him and he looked like a college player already. So mm. I think that those are good picks back. I think Stewart obviously is 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 a guy that you expect to come in and play. You don't recruit junior college guys unless you think they can help. For me, Offensively, I'm taking a guy at a position that West Virginia doesn't really need a lot of help, but I just think he's a playmaker, and that's Sam Brown. Uh, I was really excited about him going through recruiting, and he was kind of kept under the radar, but he's a guy at WSports.com that we had on there the entire time. You know, they recruited him hard throughout. I think the kid's a stud. You know, he really got a lot of attention late. Virginia did most of their work early. You know, they were in there and did good, and I think he has a chance to really step in and make an impact depending on how things, you know, unfold at that position. I don't know if a starting role is in the gig, but I think he catches some passes. Uh, you know, by the time it's all said and done, probably makes a few big plays. The f I'm going against kind of what I, my, I believe often. I think it's hard for freshmen to get on the, either of the lines, but I really like the potential of Akeem Ezidor, uh, the Canadian uh, defensive lineman. He's really, really gotten a lot bigger you know, really become more impressive, developed his skills a lot. And I think he's only starting to scratch the surface of what he could be at the college level. But he's a guy I think you're going to see at least in a rotational package, maybe a little bit more than Jordan Jefferson. But it would surprise me if he doesn't play. You know, there's always that learning curve, you know, making that jump from high school to college, which you can't predict. You know, some guys get it faster than others. But those are my two guys, uh, kind of under the radar, not guys you would expect off the cuff. But Guys, I'm excited to see. At, at worst, I'm excited to see. At best, I think are going to make an impact. But I want to remind you guys, again, if you enjoy this, go ahead. Sign up for the site right now using our promo code, WV2020. It is free. Free until the end of this month. I don't. You can't get better than free, right, Pat? Can't get any better. It's free now. until September 1st. Uh, all of our coverage. Join the community. We got a lot of stuff going on. And if that doesn't interest you, we have another promo going on, which we have details as well. You get fifty dollars a gear when you buy an annual subscription for half cost, so you can win either way. But thanks for tuning in again. Uh, we'll be back soon. This has been another edition of Musings from the Mountains.